Dear flesh eaters, do you think that animal flesh is safe? Do you think mad cow disease is just a thing of the past and won't happen again? The animal slaughtering business creates 8 million metric tons of animal bones, blood, feces, viscera from the slaughtering process itself, plus the animals which die on the farms or in transport. So in order to avoid having huge mountains of animal parts and to squeeze every penny out of these animals, the industry uses this by creating food for livestock. How's that for your circle of life? Now you won't see these things listed as ingredients. They know this information might scare you, so they simply call this nutrients. So here's exactly what happens. Rendering plants transform slaughter byproducts and animals that are unsuitable for human consumption from many different sources and blend it up into animal feed. <clears throat> then this feed is distributed. There is no data on the total amounts of either animal waste or rendered animals included in the feed. The FDA does not endorse this practice and has voiced concerns about the presence of pathogens and drug residues, but the practice continues nonetheless. Here are some examples of how animal products are fed back to other animals. Blood from cows is routinely dried and fed back to calves as a replacement for their mother's milk, which humans are consuming. Dairy farmers, to get as much money as possible, give a cheap form of energy called tallow to their cows. Tallow is recycled fat from other cows. Downer cows are routinely fed to lactating cows in the form of meat and bone meal. So in the case of cows, humans have taken an herbivore, not only turned the animal into an omnivore, but have turned her into a cannibal. A recent virus among pigs called porcine epidemic diarrhea virus was at least in part traced back to pig's blood in piglet feed. Because the floors of chicken operations accumulate huge, and I'm talking millions of tons, of feces, feathers, and old feed, this is removed and fed to cows. And because the chicken feed contained cow parts, that's also being fed back to the cows. So let's take a look at what exactly is present in animal feed. Number one, antibiotics, which of course can contribute to antibiotic resistant bacteria. Metals, the most concerning which are ingested and degraded to human carcinogens. And remember that fat or tallow I mentioned before? That contains contaminants such as dioxins like PCBs. Also detected in the feed are prions, like the ones responsible for mad cow disease, mycotoxins, including carcinogenic aflatoxin, bacterial pathogens such as salmonella and E. coli, antibiotic resistant bacteria themselves. <clears throat> also fed to cows are sawdust, candy with wrappers and the plastic, and the waste of the seafood industry. Now about mad cow disease. Currently testing for mad cow disease is only done on high-risk cattle. There are no plans to test the feed. In fact, there's almost no testing for anything in animal feed. It could, of course, easily be present due to the presence of animal protein from asymptomatic rendered animals. Because the rendered products come from many sources, there's no way to track it. Back. Now I can hear you flesh eaters now saying, well, what about you vegans? And it's true, sometimes animal-derived fertilizers are used on the soil to grow vegetables, and this can in turn be a source for foodborne illness. That's why veganic agriculture is such an important concept. So it makes sense also to wash your produce before eating. My friend Al from The Raw Pollution has an excellent video on the best way to wash produce to remove both bacteria and pesticide residues. I will link it below. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.